Welcome back. Uh, you know, the market's doing just fine. Let's uh, put the focus on credit ratings for India Inc. Uh, into F525. Uh, Jalen Marker, Senior Vice President uh, and Head of Credit Policy at ICRA is joining us, and so is Home Shaker Remuri, Senior Director at Crystal Ratings. Gentlemen, good morning. Great to have both of you here, uh, Jitin and Som. Uh, Prashant, this side. Uh, Som, if I can start by uh, sort of asking you, I was looking at, you know, your uh, upgrades to downgrades ratio uh, for the second half, which is moderated a little bit, but still, as you uh, in your report point out, remains pretty strong. Uh, or elevated, as you as you, as you put it, uh, can you start there? What you've seen in uh, H2 of F524, and then take us into what your expectations are for F525. Uh, thanks, Prashant, and uh, good morning. Uh, in uh, H2 uh, of fiscal 24, uh, we saw 409 upgrades in our portfolio, we doing 228 downgrades. And that is translated into a credit ratio, which is nothing but the upgrades to downgrades ratio of 1.79 times. Uh, and, and this is uh, a tad lower than what we saw in the first half of 1.91, uh, in line with what we had outlined uh, earlier. Uh, primarily driven by the domestic uh, uh, demand and, and the government-led uh, CAPEX, domestic consumption and uh, the government CAPEX were, were the uh, primary drivers uh, for this. And, and sectors which which clearly uh, uh, saw a lot of uh, upgrades uh, where the infra and infra linked uh, sectors including construction uh, renewable power road assets and even uh, uh, real estate uh, the the downgrades were a little bit higher uh, on on uh, some of the export linked sectors that included textiles and seafood primarily because of the subdued uh, global demand and uh, higher cost inventory which impacted profitability in some of the segments Coming to the outlook uh, for uh, next fiscal 2025, we continue to have a, a positive uh, 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 credit quality outlook and we expect uh, upgrades to uh, outpace the downgrades. And again, the primary uh, reasons uh, would be the steadfast uh, domestic demand, the low corporate uh, leverage levels that we have, uh, as well as the tailwinds from the ongoing, as well as uh, what we have seen in the past, the infrastructure build out that the country has undertaken. Mm. So just one point, you know, when we talk about this upgrade downgrade ratio, we're looking at the number of uh, rate, uh, the uh, number of rating actions, right? Uh, is there any way to sort of quantify this or uh, qualify this as sort of value add or representation in the economy? Uh, you know, this this metric, which perhaps uh, gives us a better idea of, you know, we, we outlined some of the sectors where the bulk of the upgrades and bulk of the downgrades have happened. But if we were to sort of look at contribution to growth. Uh, would you say the number actually is, uh, I mean, this number is, e is, is even better as compared to the 1.79 uh, that you that you pointed out? So we also track something called as a date weighted credit ratio where we don't look at just the number of companies where we saw upgrades or downgrades, but also the debt which is sitting on the balance sheet of the companies. And there the ratio came in at 1.28 times, uh, 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 somewhat uh, lower than what we saw in the first half of this fiscal. But first half was more of an aberration where we saw uh, a few uh, companies with very large uh, debt that, that uh, got upgraded. Uh, uh, in the second half, there was no such uh, skew. But nevertheless, you know, in terms of even quantum, uh, you know, the, the quantum of upgrades to downgrades are also higher. Also, you know, when I shared my outlook uh, uh, here, uh, you know, we, we use a, a framework called COIN framework where we looked at 26, uh, you know, corporate sectors uh, and, and uh, 12 uh, infrastructure sectors. And these together account for almost 72% uh, of the rated debt in the, in the uh, 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 you know, in, in the companies exploring the financial sector. And hence it is fairly representative. And what we do see is uh, 21 out of the 26 sectors, we have a strong to favorable credit quality outlook, and these account for almost 96% of the debt which we have uh, uh, under where we are undertaking the study. Hmm. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Jatin, uh, let me get you into the conversation as well. Uh, sort of look ahead into F525. I mean, from an equity perspective, uh, you know, general chatter has for some time has been that we find ourselves corporate India, India Inc. After all of the deleveraging, etc., which has happened, finds itself in the pink of health. Uh, as we enter F525 uh, as well. Maybe, you know, uh, this week we have the RBI meeting and nothing will happen, but the next step, whenever that happens, is going to be a, a cutting kind of a cycle, hopefully, not just here, but globally as well. In that context, just sort of uh, tell us, what's the outlook uh, for uh, 
for for what you rate uh, the debt that you rate across sectors into F525. Yeah, hi Prashant. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I specifically answer the question that you have asked, Prashant, uh, I'll just give you uh, an additional context uh, based on what we were seeing in FY24, uh, and that again in the context of uh, the larger period historical trend of the past three years. So uh, FY24 indeed was a year where the upgrades outnumbered downgrades by a factor of two. But there's another side to it, which is that FY24, at least what we were seeing was that it was a year of normalization in terms of trade quality. By that, what I mean is that uh, this was a year where we saw the reaffirmation rates, the rating reaffirmation rates to align with the historical average of around 80%, which means that 80% of the entities in our portfolio uh, saw the ratings getting reaffirmed. And it was only in the 20% pie that we saw ratings change. And within that 20% pie where we saw rating change, uh, there were two upgrades for every downgrade. So this is uh, unlike the situation which was there in FI 22 and FI 23 post the pandemic rebound where industry related factors were contributing to a big tailwind and there were a lot of upgrades in FI 22 and FI 23 because of that. Now coming to FI 25, uh, if, I, if you have to pick up a few sectors where uh, trend lines may continue, so there's a recency effect, recency effect relating to say the hospitality sector which has been seeing a good uptick uh, in FI23 and FI24, and we expect FI25 also to be a good year for the hospitality sector. So uh, that, uh, I think, momentum should continue for the hospitality sector in FI25. And infrastructure sector, uh, whether it is uh, roads or railways or defense-related entities, uh, they may see the benefits of uh, their high order book to OI ratios, which is currently running uh, anywhere between two to three times for many entities. So whether we talk about these uh, uh, conventional infrastructure pockets or the new age infrastructure segments like data centers, I think FI25 is again going to be a good year uh, from a great standpoint for these uh, segments as well. Mm. And on the flip side, uh, uh, just in any sectors on the other side? Yeah, on the other side, again, uh, the export oriented sectors are still not out of okay. jail. Uh, we expect that the cut and polish diamond segment, uh, which is again has uh, it's a labor intensive segment, so there could be challenges on the, that aspect as well. Uh, plus, uh, uh, we are seeing export momentum to be not uh, as rosy as yet for other segments like uh, the textile sector. There again, we expect sequentially the improvement to be there in FR25, uh, but again, the kind of capacities and the fixed costs that many of the entities in these sectors have built up, uh, that may take a while for uh, the, the revenue growth to be at a level where the profitability returns uh, to the FR22, FR23 levels. Mm -hmm. uh, other than this, agricultural commodities like tea, yeah. There again, there could be certain challenges there, uh, uh, and uh, I, I mentioned about the tea, uh, cut and polish diamond sector, textiles, uh, some bit of sequential moderation would be there in the ferrous metals also, not that the sector is going to be bursting at it seems, but we do expect that the dead by beta ratio of this sector to trend towards 2.5-3x times compared with uh, the lows of 1x that it had seen in FI22. Yeah, no, got that. You know, uh, uh, so uh, on uh, chemicals, uh, which, which is, you've identified that as one of the sectors which are facing some headwinds. Uh, in the listed universe, uh, we saw a very large player about a month ago seeing a rating downgrade. Uh, could you uh, talk to us about that particular space? I mean, uh, you know, uh, is, is there, could there be a turnaround in F525 uh, for the sector if you want to just sort of uh, dig in a little deeper there? So, uh, as far as study, there were four uh, sectors, uh, specialty chemicals, agrochemicals, uh, cotton spinners, and diamond polishers, where uh, uh, these were sectors which were facing uh, headwinds, uh, uh, you know, given that they are largely uh, aligned with, with what is the global uh, macroeconomic conditions. Um, and and uh, what we are uh, saying is for three of them, barring uh, diamond polishers for the other three, we are uh, expecting a partial recovery of sorts in, in uh, uh, fiscal uh, 25, uh, even though uh, it, 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 it will still be uh, subject to uh, some of the pressure which was there, but it may ease a little bit. Having said that, all these four uh, sectors uh, do have fairly strong balance sheets, uh, and hence from a credit quality outlook perspective, the outlook for, for uh, vast number of companies uh, in these sectors is likely to be stable to moderate. Hmm, got that. Uh, what about real estate, Som? I mean, any uh, any specific trends there? I mean, that's one uh, sector which is really repair. C compared to a couple of years back, 
I mean, actually, just a couple of years back, a complete turnaround, right? Key change. Uh, yeah, how is that expected to hold out? Yeah. Yeah, clearly, uh, you're right. I mean, residential real estate sector uh, is uh, riding on uh, buoyant consumer demand and uh, inventory levels are also at, at much, much lower levels compared to what, what you have highlighted. Two, three years back, there used to be around four to five years of uh, uh, sales in, in uh, major cities. Now, it is trending more towards closer to two, two and a half times. Uh, two years. So, so very clearly, uh, uh, residential real estate, the fortunes are, are uh, much better and it's amongst the sectors where we've seen more upgrades uh, and, and we continue to see uh, buoyancy here. Commercial uh, real estate uh, uh, continues to remain uh, uh, steady, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, credit quality uh, outlook. Mm. Jatin, uh, any other sort of uh, Anything else which strikes out to you, which you'd like to highlight for our viewers as we head into 25? Overall, we think that uh, there are many sectors which are which have done well over the past three years, but are yet to see the post-pandemic part. So whether we look at cement or steel or uh, automobiles, whether passenger vehicles or commercial vehicles, I think among one, one common thread that runs across these sectors is that they've done well over the past three years. But if you, if you were to compare the performance of these sectors in terms of volume growth, uh, with the anchor being FN19, which was a pre-pandemic year, uh, then we would see that the progress or the growth that these sectors have seen in terms of volumes, it is yet to achieve that pre-pandemic path. Real estate sector has been one ex one exception uh, in the sense that when we look at uh, the CAGR since FN19 for real estate sales in terms of millions of square feet of uh, property real, uh, residential real estate sale in the, in the top seven cities in India, uh, that growth number would be anywhere in the vicinity of uh, 12 to 15 percent, which on a CHR basis is, is a very promising number. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, there are still several sectors where capacity expansion has been taking place, uh, the likes of chemicals or steel or cement and the likes, so which means that uh, over an extended time horizon, uh, which would be in the next three to five years, uh, these sectors should achieve that pre-pandemic part. It has been slow, but it should achieve over the medium term. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, Jatin and Soam, great to speak with both of you here on CMBC TV 18 this morning. More uh, green than red, as we say, in market balance, and uh, generally looking pretty upbeat as we head into F525 on the credit rating side. So that's uh, the word coming in from Crystal and Ikra Market. Sonia, meanwhile,